and a very good morning. Um, first of all, I would like to thank everyone for spending your Saturday morning with us. Welcome to the third Urban Talk webinar by Perika Banda. This webinar wraps up our events for 2020. We'd like to thank Kementerian Kerjaraya for the opportunity to be part of the Hari Professional Ten uh, Technical Negara, held this year from December 5th to December 30th. The purpose is to appreciate the technical professionals for their contribution towards nation building, and hopefully, the younger generation would also be inclined to become technical professionals as, professionals as well, as our nation propels towards the future. The theme for this year's Hari Professional Technical Negara is Masa Depan Adalah Kita. We've got a fantastic lineup of panelists this morning, and moderating the webinar is none other than uh, Datuk TPR Dolbani Mijan, the former Director General of Plan Malaysia. Before we start, I would like to remind everybody watching on Facebook that we will share an attendance form and you will receive an each certificate uh, if you fill this in. You can also type your questions in the chat box and we will share them with the panelists um, after during the discussion. Um, please also uh, direct your questions to a particular panelist, you know, if, uh, if, it's, a, if it's a more uh, directed question. Um, with that, um, then I wish you a very fruitful session. So over to you, Dr. Dulbani. Floor is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you, Azrin. Are you okay over there? All right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum dalam sejahtera. A very good morning and very good fruitful weekend. Uh, first thing, I would like to uh, congratulate Pereka Bandar, Malaysia Urban Design Associations for organizing this Urban Talk se uh, Series 3 via webinar virtual today with very special topic, Implementing Good Urban Design for Malaysian Cities, a shared responsibility by all. And thank you for having me as moderator. I missed the first two due to CMCO. Urban Talk this time is uh, quite different. Uh, this time we invite professionals from different disciplines as they are also shared their responsibility and roles in shaping built environment, especially in creating good city center. Urban design is thus far being created as another hybrid, I would say hybrid disciplines. Uh, who did not or portray that I would say uh, as a micro planning, I still like to say uh, those days micro planning versus micro architecture that deals with human scale, street level, 3D and so forth. Okay, uh, I would like to share with you before I can start a caption. Uh, please, uh, I think I have sent to the, the uh, Orostia yesterday or last two days. Can you please share with me? Caption, if I may read it, Rohayada. The, the caption sounds something like this, I can share with you. A body design discipline emerged as a reaction to the situation of urban planning and architecture, relationship with the city city during the modernist era while planning was more focused on creating solution that feel fit all for the city architectural concept had their focus on the buildings uh, themselves rather than the relationship with the public realm thus urban design emerged as a bridge between urban planning and architecture plus landscape architecture engineering and so on with that premise I would like to start with my uh, uh, with with calling everyone here. So I think uh, today we have very uh, distinguished speaker. If I can start uh, mentioning here, I think we have TPR Tuan Haji uh, Ehsan Zainal Mohta, President MIP Malaysian Institute of Planners, and we have also Engineer Dr Nor Azha Muhammad Arif, Chairman Project Management Technical Division the Institute of Engineering Engineers Malaysia, IEM. We have also architect Abu Zarim Abu Bakar, Department, uh, Deputy President, Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia. 
We have Associate Professor Landscape Architect Dr. Suhardi Maulan, President Institute of Ilam, uh, and also uh, Dr. Suhana Samsudin, UTM Adjunct Professor and also President Malaysian Urban Design Association. To start here, I think, uh, can, uh, may I uh, read out the rule here? So uh, the whole webinar or discourse will take about um, two hours, yeah, and limit to five panelists, and also we have four questions. Each question will take about 20 minutes discussion and shared by three or four or five panelists, it depends on your um, specialty and so on, and how often the panelists would participate. Each uh, panelist will take about two, three or four minutes, the most, for each question, and it will leave roughly 30 minutes uh, or 40 minutes for QA at the end of the session. So I will start with the first question. Uh, yeah, what is the current problem of our cities from your profession, profession perspective, and how does it relate to good urban design? So I turn to or we probably we start with uh, uh, TPR Tuan Haji Ehsan. Thank you. Okay, good morning. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I suggest if, if we are to talk about the current problems in, in our cities, in the first place, we have to understand that our cities uh, consist of uh, different sizes, different scale, uh, different needs, uh, different location. So if you talk about uh, Kuala Lumpur in particular, or maybe similar to Johor and similar to Penang, uh, we have been recognized as, I think, uh, internationally, uh, one of the most beautiful cities uh, in the world. That's Kuala Lumpur, uh, Penang, and Johor, with, with each with its own strength and specialty. Now, what is wrong, if, if you want to say what is wrong uh, with this the situation, is that uh, it seems that um, how we approach uh, planning uh, have, have been comprehensive, but maybe uh, the issues comes out when we do not manage to coordinate the development uh, in, in a better fashion. Uh, for example, among the problems that we face in our cities is uh, loss of green spaces, um, not well connected. Uh, we have also issues of uh, crime. So these are these are things that that uh, the cities, uh, our city, need to look into. But they are as a result of I would say. Uh, uh, non, some of the uh, concepts uh, are not implementable uh, because of, uh, I think, partly uh, each group is only looking at its own interests. For example, uh, just, just, a, just a very uh, simple example, perhaps, developers are looking at maximizing uh, density in order to get their profits. Uh, whereas the authorities are concerned with ensuring that we have good public space. But that itself, uh, uh, sometimes uh, there's a clash of ideas uh, because we have to base on certain standards that are maybe um, not acceptable uh, in terms of making both parties uh, look at it in a win-win situation. So in a nutshell, I would say that uh, the, the main uh, issues and challenges facing the cities are um, we have to be more uh, uh, inclusive of all needs, and we also have to uh, consider um, public good uh, versus uh, perhaps uh, interest group. So uh, I, I hope that gives an overview of the problems in the city. Back to you, uh, Atok Musi. Yeah, thank you, TPR uh, Dato uh, Haji Haji Isan. I think you have very good uh, insight uh, from planning perspective. I think uh, from the wider wider uh, perspective, probably uh, the rest four could be. You want to uh, architect? Probably you want to give some feedback about it. Thank you very much, Dato. Um, yeah, I'm, I'd like to tackle some of it. Uh, some of the points that has been raised by uh, uh, 
Tuan Haji. Tuan Haji. Okay, so yeah, just to add to that, I think uh, at the professional level, I mean, architects level, we have a lot of uh, uh, restriction by by, regul by the legislators. Lah. Our building bylaws and whatnot have actually restricted it in, in many ways as to what we can do and without do, cannot do within the site. As architects, as pointed out, is basically in the building site. So in order for us to add to the site and contribute to the to the environment, we need to be the legislators be more open. And just generally, uh, just to point out, uh, there are now currently, I think, 33, uh, 23 or 24 cities already in Malaysia. Okay, the last one, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, Subang Jaya. Kalau tak silap lah. Okay, so now we have a lot of this. The problem, one of the problems that we face is, of course, connectivity, linkages. You know, and that kita, uh, we have big spark, maybe public parks and so on, but the connectivity between the community and the other spaces, takde. Okay, that there is none. So at the end of the day, it becomes very silo and it acts to the public transport problem pula. Okay, so the, when, when the public transport then, people have to drive, people have. So uh, to make it more usable to the, for the public, it's, it's very difficult. So nak, nak gunakan, to use this thing is very different. And uh, whilst we think, uh, whilst our city have got big public parks, the smaller, the smaller open spaces, uh, is there is lack of it. You know, and again, the connectivity between each other, tidak ada. So that is this one. One of the other things that we find is, of course, uh, whilst the whilst the PBT are helping and so on, a lot of us designers are working in silos. Silos meaning, uh, you know, the town planners will be on his, coming up with their own, uh, engineers will be coming up with their own design to put up the space. Uh, upper landscape also will be looking at very space. So, but tak de, tak de, uh, there is no uh, connectivity in terms of working. The last one that I want to say is that uh, dalam, dalam architect, for architects alone, you know, we, we uh, as I mentioned earlier, kita work within the site. Okay. So, but then we have greater ideas to share with all the other stakeholders other designers, other professionals, all right? So so let's work towards this in order, and uh, PBT must have regular engagement so that we can come up with, uh, with urban design that is meaningful to not just us, but to the public, okay? To the, to the user at large. I think that uh, I'll stop there, uh, Dato. Okay. So I got some reservation, but I'm not going to tell you here, probably later, because uh, uh, yeah, ta uh, the role of town planner. I think town planner is not only for the very quick one, town planner is not only planning the place uh, or comprehensively, but they are also uh, supposed to be coordinating various uh, fields. Uh, therefore, they should read, uh, follow through the big plan when you are actually uh, implementing the local, uh, the, the smaller plan yeah, or, or, or local plan. So I think uh, perhaps from the other profession, could be? Please? Uh, boleh saya, Datuk? Silakan, silakan, uh, Dr. Suhardi. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and uh, very good morning. Yeah. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So first, thank you very much for the uh, for inviting Ilham as, as well as myself uh, to give some ideas and insight uh, to this morning webinar. So regarding the urban design, the issue that we are looking for or we are identified as a landscape architect. First of all, actually, I think I've been mentioned by architect Abu Zarim, actually is the availability of the public space right, or urban open spaces uh, that is very much uh, needed, uh, regardless of it is parks, uh, urban plazas, small open spaces, pocket park, and etc. But uh, but by we first we we lack of them, but 
but even once we have them, we also have a problem of linkages or connectivity once it's already pointed out by Aditya Abu Zarin as well. So how we are actually we going to link all these spaces so people can move along uh, in the city freely, easily, right? And plus uh, interconnected with the, our public transportation system. So it is something is very much lacking in our city, I can say. But um, in terms of the successfulness of these particular spaces, we need a very good town planning. And we, we also need a very good architecture design. So it come hand in hand, it should come hand in hand. All these things, the uh, urban open spaces, uh, design, architectural design, town planning work, and so forth. Uh, so it has to work hand, uh, in hand to have a good design. So that is the thing that we see, that I see is very much lacking at this particular moment. Um, now the one actually as a real estate architect, one thing that very much concern is actually is the urban natural resources. When you're talking about urban natural resources, people will be say, talking about trees, but trees is only one landscape element in the city. All right, but we also need to look into the forest itself, the urban forest, the urban water bodies like the pond, the retention pond, uh, the lakes, right, the rivers and everything. So we need to look into all these urban natural resources, uh, conserve it properly and make use uh, and design it for the, for the public goods and public use. So this is something that uh, I think it's problematic at this particular moment in terms of the design of urban areas in Malaysia. We tend to look into that as a secondary part of it. Of course, maybe we are at the very stage of the urban design in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. We tend to look into the physical part, but and the natural resource is second. But we don't have we, we don't want to to leave it behind or become make it secondary because at the end of the day, go, we're going to pay a very big price or heavy, mm -hmm. heavy price to actually to reconserve them back, to conserve them back, to restore them back to the state that we want. So I think uh, this particular issue need to be looked into for us to have a very good urban design. And of course, as what Architect uh, uh, Buzarim and TPR uh, said, we need a collaborative effort uh, to come up with a good urban design. And uh, the public offices, the local authorities, uh, plan Malaysia, Departemen Askap Negara, probably perhaps JPR, JPS. We need to work together to come up with a very good policy regarding the urban design implementation in Malaysia. That is my point at this particular moment, Dato. Before okay, we okay, move thank, on. Yeah, okay, thank you. We have all a uh, very good thing. I would say uh, we have a good planning, we have a good urban design, we have a good architecture and so on. Probably I think uh, the guru, the maha guru of urban design said, or uh, at once giving remark. Probably even even though if you have a good planning, good urban design, and good this uh, good architecture, but the problem is actually implementation. Probably the engineer probably will uh, enlighten us about it. Uh, so how is it, is uh, engineer? Thank you, uh, Datuk. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Assalamualaikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, <coughs> Okay, um, let me straight go to the, okay, I, I believe I'm representing the engineering fraternity uh, uh, this morning. Yeah. Uh, we, we have many disciplines. Uh, me, myself, is more on the ICT electronic. Mm -hmm. um, uh, okay, let me touch on the maybe uh, the requirement of the, on, on the planning or design. Uh, I have, I had um, an experience uh, previously in wastewater treatment um, industry where, um, uh, during that, that, that period, I, I learned about the requirement of, you know, from SPAN in terms of the water treatment, uh, wastewater treatment uh, plant that, that is required when, when you do development. So I got to learn also there are many technologies available uh, locally as well as uh, internationally, but not many that is uh, uh, compact technologies, compact water treatment, uh, wastewater treatment uh, plant uh, that is uh, available uh, overseas. Uh, approved here in, in the country. Uh, I see the advantage of, of this uh, technologies are it, 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 um, it will provide a very uh, minimum space uh, or the requirement for, for the wastewater treatment uh, uh, plant and we can maximize the, the rest um, uh, for, for a better uh, usage. Of course it will depends on the, the authority requirement for, 
there are uh, uh, laws that we have to follow, whether it will require amendments to that or not. Okay, that is on that um, maybe uh, saving space kind of thing. Uh, from the point of view of uh, um, and the panelists uh, earlier, I also mentioned about connectivity, maybe connectivity in terms of uh, physical connectivity. Uh, let me touch on the, um, um, uh, the telecommunication connectivity. I, I, um, I believe in terms of the connectivity, in terms of tele telecommunication, uh, uh, cities, areas are, are well connected uh, by their telcos. Although there are, there, are, there are places where when the traffic is very high, you, you will have some sort of problems uh, getting connected, eh? especially when, when we do this kind of uh, activities, uh, video conferencing. Eh? Um, during this pandemic um, uh, time, where a uh, majority of us are working from home, we are using a lot of um, uh, the uh, connectivity to, to do meetings and do our work. Um, so, yeah. I would say the, the connectivity in terms of telecommunication are, are, are well uh, are taken care of, all, uh, although there's a few problems. But uh, you know that um, uh, we, the people, um, are very uh, worse, well versed in terms of technology. Uh, we are using uh, smart devices. Yeah? Most of us are using smart devices. But we need to translate this into utilizing it uh, in, in, in living in our city. Um, uh, talking about smart city, um, we, we are quite behind in terms of uh, implementing the smart city uh, elements uh, in, in, in our, our current cities. Um, taking for example, maybe smart, uh, so, sorry, traffic light. Yeah? Uh, of course, we have sensors, right, uh, using uh, the traffic lights, uh, but the, the sensors are, uh, are yet to be maybe um, at a higher um, level. I would say if we, uh, there will be time when we will implement AI at our, our okay. traffic light system. So that, uh, of course, when you have the sensor, it works uh, well in the, in the uh, average uh, environment. But when it comes to uh, peak hours like in the morning and when coming back from office, um, you still need the, the police traffic to, to, to take care of, of the traffic. Okay, doctor, I got to stop you here because uh, uh, we have only a few minutes for uh, probably Professor, Professor Suhada to... Few minutes. Yep. <laughs> Okay, few minutes okay. here. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum. Um, I think I will be in discussing with the current problem of the cities from the perspective of an uh, urban design is to look at the very um, definition and scope of urban design, which is about the art of building cities with the ultimate goal of achieving the sense of place. Now, this the, the very essence of urban design is we are look we are uh, we are concerned about cities having identity, character, and sense of place. And the major problem that I uh, noticed out of the research that I have conducted for the past twenty five years when I was uh, when I was uh, serving uh, at the university is that our cities lack. One of the major aspects is that our cities lack in terms of character. And character is not something that you achieve by good town planning or good uh, system or even good architecture. But if they don't actually relate to its context, then it will be like an, um, uh, the analogy is like an orchestra where all the instruments are playing on their own without having a conductor to, to, to organize uh, or to coordinate. Uh, the musical instruments so that they will come out with um, with a pleasant um, uh, melody. So what will happen without that such coordination, we will have a state of chaos uh, in respect to uh, design. The other problem that I noticed, uh, uh, apart from not having lacking in terms of what is meant by character, is about, character is about the general ambience of a city, which actually portray a certain identity which makes every city having its own uniqueness and identity. Now, the problem that we see is that in the um, most of our cities, we tend to actually subdue the contribution of the historical places or the, the historic centers as giving the character to the city. In fact, this is actually our, our major problem where we, in the pursuit for progress and modernization and internalization of our, our architecture, we tend to play down on, the, on these historical places. Whereby, if you look at the uh, origin of cities, 
these are the places which give the genius loci to the to the city the ones that give the spirit of the place and if you look at um uh, from the environmental psychology aspect the center of meanings are normally at the historical places and our attitude towards the historical uh, places are set to say you know, you know it's not uh, it's not justifying uh, the contribution that they played um, there's very little effort to actually um, showcase our historical places as the face of the city. And this is not the uh, attitude that is being adopted in the developed countries where they tend to focus a lot into conserving the historical places as the place that they showcase to, uh, to people. And these are the ones that attracts um, uh, tourists or even local tourists uh, to the city. So I think... Uh, if we have this attitude whereby we uh, do not appreciate our urban heritage, we do not appreciate our the genius loci or the, the, the elements that creates the identity of the, of the city, then we will have a problem that we, we may have very um, sophisticated, high technology uh, city, but we will uh, lose our uh, sense of place and identity. I'll stop at that. <laughs> okay, thank you, Professor. I think I agree with you. I think uh, the word is uh, we lost uh, genius of lo genius loci, also as a sense of place where urban design is actually looking into it. Yeah. Mm. So I think uh, uh, I think we finish one uh, first que uh, question one. I think uh, nicely. Uh, it's about twenty minutes, and can we move forward to question two? Uh, because at the end, I think we want to have some kind of times uh, for question uh, and answer later. Eh? So I think we have to limit ourselves. So the, the second question, actually, uh, what is the major stumbling block in getting our cities to have better quality environment that meet the needs of the public? Oh, I think uh, I would start with probably uh, before we, we have a TPR, now we have architect first, probably. Yeah, uh, architect. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, terima kasih. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for for me, uh, there's a lot of things that I can say, but I think I will just focus to the main things. You know, mm -hmm. I think this this is where, as pointed out, uh, the as as I mentioned earlier, that local authorities need to play their part. Okay, the realms of the implementation of policies, design intention actually is being carried out by the local authorities. The other stakeholders like the professionals, the NGOs, even the public themselves, and even the commercial, um, what do you call it, stakeholders should be brought in. Okay. So the first thing that I would say, the biggest stumbling block, not exactly stumbling block, you know, the, uh, the cooperation between the local authorities dengan, dengan the rest of the, the other committees, communities, okay? They only, they only engage us when they want to do the, let's say the five-year plan or the structural plan and so on. And then they go about doing their, their little things after that. The second thing is, that's, therefore, because of this, sorry, because of this, the dialogue between the local authorities and the stakeholders, when I say stakeholders, all those that I've mentioned earlier, must be regular, must be very, uh, uh, what do you call it, dynamic in, in nature, so that they can get what is the feedback from the from all that, that is concerned. And as pointed out again, a lot of this so-called master plan, structural plan, local plans, it takes too long. You know, it takes too long to implement. I think I can give you one example where, you know, uh, not specifically, all right, where a minister asks the local authority, what do you have for the city? And then they say, oh, we have already got this so-called master plan and so on. And then the minister, Tanya, uh, when can you implement it? Uh, I think it will take altogether about five years. Da. Not to go lima tahun to, you know, by that time, uh, to call government, to call aid, to call all these things, you know, when every, you don't know, when even, when something change, the whole thing gets changed, the whole things get away, you know, so that I think needs to change, irrespective of all the changes, the plan must go on, and this needs to be implemented 
very, very quickly, very, very fast. Thank you, uh, Dato. I'm back to you. Okay, I back to okay. Uh, is point uh, from architect. Probably you can go to TPR. Probably uh, Haji, you got about talking about uh, structure plan, local plan, implementation, and so on. Probably you can have some enlighten enlighten a bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Dr. Mursi and and fellow panelists and audience, I think if we talk about the main stumbling block. Um, uh, and, and by not meeting the public needs is I think um, a lot of it a lot of it is is due to ignorance ignorance on the part of uh, politicians ignorance on the part of uh, the public uh, ignorance uh, in terms of what makes uh, a, a good city see the public uh, needs are, are quite straightforward before I comment on the system the public needs is day one uh, public spaces, right? That are public places. They, they want a sense of place. They want uh, comfort. They want uh, safety. Now, the, the stumbling block is, I, I think that's what I, I will go back to what I said earlier. Uh, when you look at Kuala Lumpur and, and you look at even the other 21 cities or whatever, that, that is by definition legal, yeah? By the legal definition, Majlis Pabandaran so um, even if you look at all these cities and towns, we will find a certain degree of success. Uh, I think we, we have a good traffic control. We do have public spaces and public places, but we want more. And, and I think that is not wrong, you see? But uh, when I said we are in ignorance because we cannot expect uh, the plans to be implemented overnight. Now, plans are plans. Plans are something that you plan for 25 years, but it does not mean it can be implemented tomorrow. Uh, as, as correctly point, pointed by my uh, colleague Abu Zari just now, uh, too many changes in government. The plans should remain consistent. That's why if there is political interference, there is ignorance on the, on the part of the uh, uh, politicians looking at it or, or the, those who implement even at the local authority, that the, the plans, uh, are only looking from one aspect of it, of the public needs. Now, th there's a bigger public need in terms of in in infrastructure. And just now, uh, I think Chip Mahmoud Arif pointed it correctly. Those are the micro aspects in terms of traffic management. The, the, those are the aspects that I think as a policy, for example, uh, we want people to walk, but we do not provide well walkable spaces. We want people to uh, go on public transport, but our public transport is never on time. I would say never. You know, uh, we 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 uh, uh, in in Japan. I think if the train is late, they will actually write to each one of the riders why they are late and apologize. So our sense of time is also very poor. So that's also ignorance because we take time as something that is out of the realm of good town planning of good urban design. You see, so the public transport system. Uh, uh, must must it must be ensured that it, it must be on time. So that can only be achieved if our roads are well designed. We understand the difference between roads and streets and highways and the function of each one of these. Now, um, again, if I will also talk again, uh, see about public needs and and, uh, uh, and and to my colleagues, when when we say um, what's the character of Kuala Lumpur? The needs of, of us. Look, we have our Bangunan Sultan Abu Samad. It's well maintained. It's our national identity. We have the Padang, which we adopted from the British town planning concept. You know, almost every town in Malaysia has a Padang, and I think we have we have managed uh, through good planning to maintain that to maintain that concept of a public space, which, which is the Padang. It is in Taipei. It is in Ipoh, but um, due to greed and need. Uh, of, of housing sometimes we take these public spaces and turn them into housing and uh, the public spaces that were public places is gone so you know um, i'm just saying that you know uh, the main stumbling block to me is we have to understand our function we have to work together yes i agree we have to work together we don't have to look down on each other we have to understand the function of each 
and we have to understand plans. And, and on that, Dr. Ngozi, sorry, I would like to yes. say that All right. planning, planning, we have not done enough to, to explain or to make people understand what yeah. planning can do and should yeah. do. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I uh, think uh, that's views from TPR. And we have at the three profession, probably one of you. Should I dictate the names? Yeah. Or <laughs> volunteer, <laughs> please. I think uh, uh -huh. that uh, yeah. uh, Abu Zarim and TPR uh, has touched mm -hmm. a lot on the policies mm -hmm. uh, regarding the uh, having a good urban design. But uh, I'd like to look into maybe not a different perspective. Maybe we should ask, how can we have a good urban design and planning or design? Uh, I think, and uh, picking up from what Suhana said about the characters of the cities and so on. One thing I think we have a problem in Malaysia in particular actually is that whenever we want to do a, planning or design of the urban spaces one thing that we lack of or we don't have the current information is our data so we need to improve our data collection uh, i'm not saying that the data need to be very rigorous analysis uh, similar to what uh, the academician did uh, do in universities but we need a baseline information that continuously been collected by each and every uh, local authority regarding their cities. Uh, for example, the issue about the history of the cities, uh, the needs of the people, the perception and the needs of people change over time. Uh, it's not similar. We, not, we cannot say that the one that we want in 1960s is going to be the same in 1990s or the year 2000. It's changed. This ever-changing needs of people need to be gauged. And as well as the uh, ecological data, the environmental data, all these data need to be ready beforehand. So when the landscape architects, architects and planners come in, they can come out with a very comprehensive understanding and they don't have to collect the data anymore. So this data actually is needed to be collected at the local level as well as at the regional level. So it can be used easily by the professional to plan and design their city accordingly. All right. For example, as Prof. Suhana said, uh, uh, Prof. Suhana said, the character, the image of the city, where should do we have? Do we have that kind of data? So from my, from my personal experience as well, when I did visual quality assessment, I have the issue of assessing the visual quality of the site. Unlike of the Jabatan Alam Sekita or Jabatan Metrology in where they have the very complete baseline information that can be used by the expert, but we don't have for the big environment profession. This is something that need to be understand, need to be uh, uh, need to be uh, take uh, seriously by the local authorities or even at the federal level office like the plan measure or Jabatan Nasib Negara uh, or the state planning authority. So we need to have this baseline information ready uh, for us to have a good. Uh, urban design or good planning. All right. So okay. uh, easy. That's my understanding beside the policy and everything. Thank you, doctor. Uh, yeah. Probably, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, engineer, please. Okay. Um, okay. I, I would like to relate to um, uh, landscape architect Suhardi uh, you mentioned about data, uh, data availability. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay. Uh, from 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 my uh, point of view. Uh, for, from my angle, uh, okay, um, data has been collected many times. So it's time for us to have a, 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 a system, uh, automation. Whenever data is collected, it is it is archived or it is uh, uh, it is as easily accessible, and you don't have to to request the same data again and again from 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 the same party or from different parties. So uh, um, I, I I also experienced this uh, even in the engineering bodies as well. Uh, where we are supposed to to, to be uh, in front in in in, in this uh, kind of uh, area. Okay, uh, so yeah, um, data data collection automation. Uh, I think uh, by now should be should be uh, one of the priority uh, in in the local authorities. Uh, just imagine that if we can digital digitalize every uh, single document that that uh, we have, um, and it will be easier for. For, for the local authority to do their job as well, uh, as well as engaging with, with the, the, the stakeholders. 
and on a, a surface um, uh, level, when when um, um, architect Zarin mentioned about the political uh, authority again, the the, uh, the the stumbling block there, uh, I think the understanding from the local authority as well as from the uh, the public, uh, each of uh, of the parties as well as the the, the professional need to understand uh, the. Uh, uh, the local authority need to understand the requirement from the public. Yeah, uh, the the, uh, uh, the 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 public also need to understand the you know the uh, why why it is it takes times to 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 get things done uh, because of the law and regulation. Uh, but but of course, um, local authority can, cannot cannot use that as a as a as a reason to 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 stay like that. And the professional should be there to assist in uh, improving the uh, the problems. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and last and not least, uh, <laughs> Professor Prove. Yep. Okay, I, I think um, all the panelists have already touched on uh, what, what I would also agree as a stumbling, stumbling block in getting our cities to have a um, better quality environment. I would like to emphasize uh, on the execution of all the plans and policies that has been uh, uh, written down and how much the execution has actually failed to meet the objectives of the plans. If you look at the plans that has been prepared, Malaysia has a very good planning system as far as uh, plans are concerned. We are, we are uh, at par with uh, many of the developed uh, countries and in, actually this was also agreed by one uh, professor from MIT who uh, through our uh, uh, partnership uh, with MIT on sustainable cities program. The reason why they came to study Malaysia is because they see on paper, Malaysia seems to be doing very well as far as um, uh, uh, the policies are concerned in, uh, uh, in uh, getting uh, very um, good cities. But at implementation level, we fall short, uh, partly because of the system itself and also our work culture. I would like to emphasize first on the system itself. To have a very good, uh, to have a city which have quality. I mean, I, I, what I'm, uh, urban design is talking, we, in urban design, we are more concerned about the quality of the environment. We're talking about um, uh, cities which, which have uh, uniqueness and identity. In Malaysia, we have not got a very strong development control uh, machinery or system. Where, if you compare to uh, countries like UK, they have a very strong development control uh, system, which also include design control. And if you see in Malaysia, we don't all have design control. We normally have a, a system whereby there's only checking of the uh, technical aspects like plot ratio, density, setbacks, and so forth, which can, can be done by somebody who, who's not uh, even at a higher level. Uh, uh, training and planning, but what is missing is to guide the design of any development in the city towards meeting the uh, objectives and the policies that has been set in the plans and uh, local plan. So in a way, there is a missing link between the plans that has been written and the plans also took a long time. I would agree with architect Abu Zarim. By the time the plan is being um, uh, uh, gazetted or or, or or they being accepted many things on the ground has already disappeared. I mean, you are, you are actually the context has already changed by the time the, the plans are, are ready. And that's why in UK, they do not rely solely on the statutory plans. To get a, a statutory plans like the local plans, such a plan, you know, you have to go through certain procedures. And, uh, and by the time you, you, you complete all the procedures, it's already like outdated in a, in a way. And you need to review it. But what happened in UK, they have a non-statutory documents to support these plans. Before the, the statutory plans are being uh, um, uh, uh, adopted, they already got the non-statutory one, which is like design briefs, design guide, site briefs, uh, uh, urban design compendium, urban design framework, all sort of all sort of series of documents which are at hand with, uh, with the local authority planners who will sit down and discuss with the uh, architects who come in with the plans uh, for the site and they tend to coordinate all the design within the city so that they can say, okay, we want this place to be the landmark. We want this building to be landmark. So no building should, should, should be taller than this place. And we want this place to have a character of a certain district. And they will guide the architects. I remember because I did one research uh, 
uh, funded by MOSTI, where I interviewed five local authorities in UK to see how they actually control and um, uh, manage the, the design of the historical places in the city. And I was so impressed at the level of detail the local authority planners discussing with the architects to get what they want in tandem with the policies that they have set. I don't think we have that in, in Malaysia. We don't even have enough planners to actually sit down and decide. They don't even have the time to actually go through the plans except for checking the technical. So, and the architects are left with their clients. And clients are not going to be bothered about coordinating design with the, the other buildings. They just want to get uh, maximum profit. And sometimes the architect cannot even get what they want to do on the site because the client does not support them. And any uh, uh, submission of uh, uh, plan submissions are not being refused for design uh, reason. Usually, you never, never been refused for design. But if you look at UK, many submissions sometimes are being planning permission be refused because of design, because they have a very good uh, checking system as far as design is concerned. And this is yeah. what is missing. And we need more planners trained to be able to assess design and also to be able to read the plans and also to see whether the the the, the building plans are actually um, um, re responding to the to the context and to the site. Yeah. Good. Yeah, there's a gap between planning and implementation and also the understanding of place and so on. Appreciation, yeah. Probably, uh, I don't know, I would say probably I'm wrong. Uh, public lack of appreciation. Public is being ignorance about the quality of a city center and so on. Probably, yeah, uh, they rely so much on professional. Not like uh, other countries, uh, the black country, I think public has very big say. You know, so with that, I think uh, can we just move forward? Uh, we can go if we can go to the third questions. Uh, yeah, if I may uh, read it here. How can we have cities that have identity that could foster sense of pride to the people? I think has been mentioned much earlier. Probably we can go deeper about about this one about local uh, local identity and so on. So I think probably we can start from uh, the smallest one, probably up or, 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 or the the very detailed planning. Probably Dr. Swami, uh, we we'll give it to you first. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, I think the uh, uh, what we can do actually to enhance the character of the place and so forth. I think. Uh, Uh, we need to, to to identify the identity of the place as we need to understand the the soul of the city itself. What actually the city is all about? What actually the uh, the the I have to go back to the theory of urban design. What is the image of the city is and uh, what actually people how actually people relate themselves to the cities and so forth. So, uh, and, and I think uh, we need to engage a lot with the communities or the people who are actually live in the city itself to really understand what they want. Um, so in this sense, uh, we can have a better understanding actually what the city should be uh, for them, right? Uh, I can say that city in Kelantan probably, the needs of the people might be different uh, in comparison to uh, Kuala Lumpur or Johor Bahru. So uh, we really need to understand what actually the city means uh, for the people. So from understanding what actually people need and uh, perception, uh, we can be the city that really have a meaning to them. So that is very important. So at the end of the day, uh, people who are coming into the city, the outsiders or the visitors actually can appreciate this is something different from what they have in their own city itself. So I think uh, this is very important aspect uh, to, uh, to understand uh, so we can have a good characters and a good image of the city itself. Uh, I agree with uh, Prof. Suhana saying that, uh, that we need to have the urban design guideline, the design guideline, not the planning guideline, the design guideline actually to uh, to to uh, to somehow uh, 
control uh, the situation so we can have what we want. Uh, but the, this one actually, but how are we going to develop it? Uh, so that is the, the thing. And then what is the, what is the, uh, what is the willingness of the PBT to have uh, this kind of uh, unstatutory document to control them? And we can say that uh, in our local authority practice, uh, most, most of the time they are governed or they are guided by the, by the law. So. So it's very much unlikely they want to uh, to do something that is not governed by the law. I think so. Uh, so because at the end of the day, maybe they're afraid they're going to be uh, asked again why they're doing this, why doing that, and so forth. But coming back to the question, actually, is that uh, to have the city that is meaningful, have a good characters and a good image, we need to go back to the understanding of what people with their ideas and understanding and perception of the city itself. And from this foundation, from this understanding, we actually can build a better good uh, urban design as well as a good uh, urban design guidelines. Uh, that's what I think uh, that need to be done. Okay, for the moment, yeah? So yeah, for the moment. Yeah, okay. Uh, probably I can, should I call Haji? Uh, Haji, yeah, Haji, TPR? It's about a set of pride to people and so on, uh, especially like uh, creating some of place in the city center. The identity. Want to say something? Yeah. Identity of the city, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think uh, Prof. Sohana has uh, mentioned it, and I think the other panelists have mentioned it. But, mm. but like I said, we are asked to our listeners and among ourselves. What is the identity of Kuala Lumpur? I mean, before we decide what we want to do for Kuala Lumpur or for Johor Bahru or for mm -hmm. Penang, for that matter, what is the image that we have in our head on the identity of the city? So I, I think, um, uh, to my understanding, and I think uh, most of the panelists would also have the same thought. See, Kuala Lumpur started at the confluence. It was a tin mining and it became an administrative center. And then the British took over. I mean, the, the history is long, right? But basically, yeah. Kuala Lumpur is the capital of, of Malaysia. It's not the administrative capital. It is the capital. It is the city. So it, it should reflect our national identity. But you know how some things are also very sensitive. Uh, but there, in our city center, I think, like I said, we have preserved it pretty well. Uh, we have... Uh, the, uh, the tallest twin tower in the center. We do have our uh, Moorish architecture. We do have our public space. So, so those elements of, of identity uh, of, of, of Malaysia being a humid, uh, hot climate uh, should determine the character that we should have. We should have more shaded areas. We should be able to walk more freely. And, and Malaysia is an independent country. And due to COVID as well, we need more public spaces which is turned into public places. So this, this to me, is that character. Uh, satu bandar ibu negara Malaysia yang mempunyai penduduk Melayu yang majoriti dengan mengambil kira uh, lain-lain uh, kaum dengan cara dan ciri-ciri mereka yang tersendiri. So I think that's reflected uh, quite well. Uh, but I think we never tell the story enough, right? The morphology of our city. Uh, I, I think that's 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 one thing uh, uh, the technology. But the other thing is we must not forget that these very physical things are also or needs to be reflected in the soft part, in the human part. Like that's that's Islamic city means you have just have arches and domes, you know. Islamic city, for example, reflects that you must be able to move easily, that you 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 don't have stumbling blocks, that you have barrier free, that you're accessible to public good. You know, so these are the, the elements that I think our city mm. already have to a certain extent. But I just want to touch a little bit about the uh, non-statutory part as well. Uh, I think uh, we have a lot of guidelines. That, that's what I say. If, if I were to say um, uh, national planning guidelines, ni boleh buat satu library, even on urban design. Yeah. And, and these urban uh, design guidelines did not come out just from a town planner, but came out from collaboration with everybody. So we have hundreds of guidelines, I would say. But, yeah. but, but as correctly pointed by Prof. 
it's not used properly. It's not used in decision making. So you know you can't blame the local authority as well because now we see there's pressure from the government. For example, you want your KM to uh, be approved faster. Within, uh, faster. You know you say no more, no more, no more, no more guidelines, no more. You know, kalau boleh tak nak KM pun, kalau boleh terus nak buat bangunan. You know, what can we do when those things are imposed on earth, on us? You know, we have an, if I'm not mistaken, in Kuala Lumpur, there's an hmm. even urban design committee. Uh, formerly, I think, or still chaired by Tan Sri Easter, I think. You know, looking into building designs, looking into walkways. For example, I have to say this. For example, in Kuala Lumpur, we have elevated walkways. You know, as, as a planner, as a person who's concerned about urban design, I don't agree to elevated walkways. But try and say that to the government. You see, right? Because elevated uh, walkways take away uh, the human scale, right? It, yeah, they it, are no. They are no. Actually, it's white elephant. Nobody uses yeah. it. <laughs> Nobody yeah? uses it. No, it takes no. <laughs> it takes no. it takes away the views. You see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So it takes away the street level. So, but but these things, you see, guideline cakap jangan buat elevated walkway. Guideline dah ada. Tapi nak buat juga macam mana tu? So you know, like I said, some of these things, the implementation part, the uh, the local authority would have to take some responsibility on this. So exactly, you know, just you know, we we yeah. but, but like I said, they have done a lot of good things as well, which we must acknowledge. So uh, okay. uh, uh, on a last note about this, I would really really encourage uh, our listeners uh, to walk around our city center. Along the rivers, along uh, uh, Bangunan Sultan Abdul Samad, and see the good works that has been done. At But we street, need at street level, yeah, at street level. At street level, at street exactly. level. Exactly. Right? Yep. Uh, so this one, these are the things that I think. Uh, good. Um, you know, we we can do more. Definitely, we can do more. Yeah, much agree, uh, to Haji. Probably, Prof. Before we can go to <laughs> Chiza Zarif. Yeah. Okay. Um. We talk about uh, right. identity and mm. ident that why it's connected together because identity is actually something that is linked to people's sense of belonging and pride. When a place have identity, then people will have the sense of attachment to keep the place intact, not to, to protect the place from further destruction. That's why if you look at the developed countries, you know, the, the residents go all out to defend their, their, their place from, from being um, uh, disturbed damaged. or damaged yep. by, by the authority. In fact, when in my... Oh, sorry. In my discussion with one of the uh, planner in Durham City Council, I asked them, now, how do you manage to keep all the, the obtrusive development from invading the city center? You know, how, how, how are you able to protect all these, all these uh, places of historical and cultural significance? They said to me that you know, we make use of the public because the public uh, has a sense of pride with their, with, with their city. And why do they have a sense of pride? Because the cities are being well taken care of so actually um in uh, environmental psychology there is such thing which we call environmental numbness environmental numbness is, is a situation whereby people are being subject to a very uh, disturbing um uh, situation or environment that in the end they just accept it as a norm So in the end, whatever is being done, you know, they, they don't even have the sense of uh, mm. uh, pride or attachment. That's why you can see in Malaysia, people can just eat at the food eateries and where the rats are running all over the place. And they can just simply have the food because it's a norm. I mean, it's a, it's a normal situation. But you try to bring in the mat saleh to eat in that kind of place. So they'll be screaming, you know, how can we eat in a very filthy uh, situation? Uh, so that, that is the, the, the example. But what I would like to touch on when we talk about identity is we must build cities that respect our culture, our traditions, our heritage, our climate, and also the natural resources that we have. I agree with Dr. Suhardi, I mean, about the natural resources. Look at our rivers. You know, we, we, we don't have respect to our rivers. Uh, uh, Before, before the River of Life project, you know, <laughs> you can see that rivers are actually the backyards, you know, they are the drains. They were being treated like a monsoon drains. You discharge everything into the river. You put all your utility lines along the river. And it's never, the river has never been seen as, uh, as uh, even the genius loci. 
uh, to the city. So this is this attitude is very um, this attitude has to go because if uh, the other problem is that we also have a uh, inferiority complex when we talk about designing uh, our cities. We tend to look at other cities in the world as the model mm. for us to design our city. Look at the yep. various templates they have. We have the waterfront templates. We have the templates to design uh, uh, squares that actually doesn't fit to our culture. We have the template to design the waterfront, which only uh, uh, works well in America or in UK. And, and we never seem to see that whatever has been done in other countries actually has to be adapted to our climate, to our culture <laughs> before they can actually uh, develop yeah, a yeah. sense of pride to the mm. uh, to the people. Uh, on, a, on a final note, I would like to emphasize that there should be a smart partnership between the, the universities and the practitioners. The, the lecturers, uh, the researchers in universities have done lots of research. When talking mm. about data, mm. you know, we've mm. got lots of research being done, but where, what happened to all the findings yeah. in the research? They are on the shelves of the libraries. And they are the they are they are there for the lecturers to write papers, publish in impact factor journals, and that's it. Yeah. The lecturers are very happy. But how can we use all this information, this local localized data that actually localize mm. the situation in Malaysia for good practice? And another thing is that in in the teaching of urban design or even in architecture, who do we refer to? Whose theories do we refer to? They are the theories that's been developed in the West. We're still talking about Kevin Lynch image of the city uh, theory. Whereas mm. this theory doesn't really apply when you talk about identity. Because my PhD yeah. is not that. I tested his theory in Malaysia. It's yep. not. Yep. See, yep. There's a missing uh, aspect. So mm. we cannot just take whatever been done in the West as the, as, as the yeah. good thing and plonk it into our city. Otherwise, we will not get an, an ident uh, uh, our identity. Okay, Prof. We probably like to shortcut uh. <laughs> without knowing our identity. <laughs> You know, truly, and so on. Pro probably, uh, Abu Zarim, eh, Zarim, please. You yeah, may say okay. something. Yeah. A lot of <laughs> okay, a yeah. lot of things said. So I'll try to keep it very short and simple. Yes, please. You yeah. Know? So at the end of the day, we talk about identity. The problem with with identity when we talk, what is Malaysian identity? You know, when you look at the actual repercussion of pushing. A lot of us tend to push, uh, you know, let a lot of us uh, say, okay, it must be race-based, it must be culture-based, it must be, whereas as pointed out by Prof earlier, you know, it is actually what you want for the place. Ultimately, yep. what is it that you want to portray? For example, KL, what, mm -hmm. what do you want to see? You know, mm -hmm. do you want it to be a modern city? Do you want it to be... Uh, you know, historical as pointed out by Haji yeah. San just now, mm -hmm. you know, because of our long history, should we portray that? Mm -hmm. You know, I like to point out the, the problems also when we do that. Um, yes, taking KL alone, you have many, many places of interest, which is both local and, uh, and, and foreign interest. Tourists like to go there. I'll give you one example where the situation is not conducive to actually co uh, to create an urban setting for it. You take you take uh, you take uh, Masjid Negara. You take the colonial uh, what do you call it railway station that is there, and a few other important and nice buildings down there, which is heritage, which is also some of that is quite new. Western linkage. You go down there. You want to be. You, you want to admire. Let's say the railway station. Okay. Silap silap lagi kena langga. Because there is no space for you to do so. Yeah. Even the uh, even the masjid negara. Okay. Masjid negara. Kalau dulu tak buat the car parking dulu into a, a sort of public place, a public uh, plaza. Memang dah kena lah. You know. So even to go from one place to another, memang lah, you know, it's, it's like it's like you putting the 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 apa, the the public into real danger. You know, if, if I was if I was to go down, let's say, not visit that place, the nearest public transport would be the LRT. Okay, that is Pasar Seni. 
All right. Nowadays, ada lah walk over. But even that is also like, macam takut kalau pergi siang-siang hari, even siang hari, you jalan seorang, eh, siap hari kena kena perompak lah. You know, kena. So all these things are not there. You know, yeah. and then when you say, as I say, you know, uh, you talk about identity, you talk about pride. Okay. How do you, yeah. you know, because Sabah, Sarawak, Kelantan, semua ada sendiri punya identiti. You know, so okay. okay, that's where it is. This is important for us to say. Of course, the other thing that you need to do is is correct sense of pride. But before you have sense of pride, you must have sense of responsibility. Okay, you must have the the locals or the community must have sense of ownership. Okay. So sekarang ni, the, the sense of ownership okay. tak ada. It only belongs to the local authority. Kalau foto ke sampah ke, you know, if the sampah tak tak collect 10 hari, 2 minggu, biarlah. You know, so that is the sense. There is no sense of ownership down there. So, okay. you know, yeah. so these are the some of the things that we need to tackle. Thank okay. You. Okay, thank you, uh, Akhil Sayyid Abu Zarim. I think last probably, uh, doctor, you want to say something about this one before we can go to another our last question. Okay, uh, a short one, doctor. Hmm. Short, yeah, please. Uh, because um, I think most of, of them have been uh, mentioned about the uh, uh, clarification on, on this identity part. Hmm. I'll just uh, like to touch on the uh, particularly the future cities. Yeah. Uh, future, future cities. Because um, when it comes to identity, they should. Uh, uh, maintain or look after their heritage that they have uh, within their place, whether it's a building, whether it's a tradition, like what our professor mentioned just now. Uh, it can be a natural uh, space, park. Um, because when, when when we go to, to, to cities, or I would say, I, I, I mentioned about smart city, or become more advanced in terms of the uh, physical uh, as well as the, uh, the people as well. Um, of course, the, the 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 tendency is to to embrace technology, right? So uh, people will, will use technology, more advanced technologies, and and uh, the the they will tend to sacrifice the heritage that they have in in the area. So there must be a balance on that. Uh, of course, we 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 need to 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 uh, keep the, the heritage that we have because it it be, it can be the main source of the identity of, of the city. But at the same time, uh, uh, yes, we, we should explore the, the, the usage of technologies to, to become more advanced, to become a much smart city. Thank you. That, that's from mine. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, I think we uh, thank you, doctor, and thank you, the rest. I think uh, now the last three, the, the first three questions, I think it's very much on theoretical, practicality, implementation, blah, blah, and so on. Yeah. But I think if we go to the last one, something is very, very current. Yeah, it's very, very current. Yeah, uh, in light of the COVID nineteen pandemic, what do you think need to be done to ensure that the city can be designed to be more resilient to meet the challenges of social distancing in the city center? I think it's very close to our heart at the moment. I think, uh, and uh, at the moment, I think they are much use, very much using the technology. Probably we give the priority to uh, engineer. Probably when you talk about the. ICT and so on. Uh, thank you. Yes, thank please. You. Okay. Um, from from the engineering field, uh, engineering fraternity, I we I can say that uh, when our contribution is more on the technology, uh, where it involves the material, the systems. Yeah. yeah. So when, when we talk about the system, of course, there are software, uh, in, uh, and hardware. Uh, yeah. Okay. And so on. So th this is more on the the uh, uh, going for 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 smart city approach, uh, where we need to maximize um, the availability of this uh, technology, yeah, whether it's system, software, or hardware, uh, to to enable the current uh, practice, uh, the current norm. Yeah? I, I'm not sure whether this this norm is going to be uh, it will continue this way or. I think uh, it, 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 you know, in some aspect, it is good to 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 to, to experience this, but uh, in the long run, uh, we we will probably most likely go back to normal. But in terms of aspect of 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 uh, keep clean, yeah, um, uh, um, 
when you practice, when 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 you talk to to, to others, speak to others, you, you have some some distance so that uh, it won't disturb them and so on. Um, um, the 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 technology or the software or the ICT um, uh, devices that we 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 can bring in from 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 overseas, yeah? like what Professor mentioned just now, we need to customize it to our local requirement because uh, our requ local requirement, although that uh, uh, when we talk about uh, physical distancing, uh, social distancing, uh, we, we have our, our way of doing social distancing, right? Not, not, not as uh, the same as in, in, in the Western countries. So it still requires customization to meet the local requirements. Thank you, Dato. Okay, thank you, engineer. Uh, probably TPR, Haji, about the pandemic. Okay. So, distancing, uh, yeah. Yeah, Dr. Wongsi, since mm -hmm. this is the last question and probably the last opportunity for me to speak in, in, in a longer, bit longer time, five minutes max, right? So yep. I think with, with regards to COVID, so, some things uh, are already in place. For example, uh, if we talk about, um, I, I think the minister did announce that the low cost uh, will be rebuilt and, and uh, to, to make it bigger. So any more uh, housing in the future, should have bigger floor space, should have three rooms, should have higher ceiling space, um, meaning that if you are required to stay home, you would be in a home that is comfortable enough for you to stay uh, and not go out. But humans being humans, we need to interact with people. And because of that, we need to ensure that our public spaces and our public spaces are, uh, are more easily accessible. Now, uh, when I mean easily accessible, that means through walking and also cycling. And I think if we read the papers, we saw how uh, one of the cyclists uh, uh, met with the death uh, in Alila in uh, Putrajaya, uh, which is supposed to be a well-planned city as well. So uh, we, we, what we realized is during COVID, uh, we need to walk, we need to cycle, we need to meet people, but in an environment that allows for social distancing. Uh, things like uh, uh, the city should also be barrier free as much as possible and that's where technology can come in. For example, if you're walking in the city, when necessary, your stoppages will be minimized so that you don't uh, clash with other people. It will allow uh, the mother to, to uh, walk with the stroller without running against another person. So I think uh, a meter walkway is no more. It's, it's definitely not feasible for a busy street. And we're talking about at least a three meter walkway with two ways. Uh, these are things that we need to implement just like traffic. The walkway would have, would have to be uh, uh, organized in such a way that it's easy for two way traffic as well. And, uh, and uh, I think these are, these are important things. We did actually propose to the government uh, yeah. a, mapping, a mapping system that would allow a person uh, to know when the person is in a red zone but by smaller scale than what is currently available now. Now you just say Slango is in the red zone, right? But you have ECEM. So we did propose about uh, the system where you use uh, true technology through your phone. It will identify your phone. No, you're not supposed to be in the street. But apparently uh, 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 the government has taken the other approach by you reporting wherever you are and they will tell you that the area is safe. So this technology is now, it's called geofencing. It is available. And I, and I hope uh, maybe uh, I are, Arif, Dr. Mawarif uh, could explore this. We've written to the Stangle government. We've written to the federal government, to MOH, where the signal will come straight to your phone to tell you, no, you're not supposed to be in this street at that street level. And, um, and, and last uh, but, but not least, um, uh, Dato, I would also like to inform our listeners and our panelists yeah. that uh, MIP is organizing uh, City Expo Malaysia. So I hope everyone can, can look up uh, on, on the internet, uh, on Facebook. Um, uh, this event will be in uh, November and it will discuss and look at all the technologies available as what we were discussing today. Thank you, Dato. November has been passed? No, November coming, 2021. 2021. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Okay, 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 okay. Long time again, eh? Yeah, one yeah, more yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, preparation, yeah, okay. Yeah. Probably, uh, uh, either one of you, three of you, whether prof, uh, architect, or landscape architect, 
talking about technology uh, pandemic saya ingat uh, I think I go first I give okay. the best for this two person last lah <laughs> they are what oh, already you, you run out of things to say after this from <laughs> <laughs> that good no, no, it's not it's not about that um I think uh, regarding the distancing and pandemic uh, of COVID-19, uh, I think at the <clears throat> for the landscape architects, uh, one thing that we really, we really can do actually by looking into how to use the landscape elements uh, to actually uh, enhancing the social distancing at the site design or the or the detail design of the space. So it's very important. For example, at this particular moment, we can you can see that people use phone use the tape and everything is very annoying to the aesthetic probably we can use something better actually to enhance the aesthetic quality of the space by using landscape elements but bear in mind maybe we can try to use the local plants and everything uh, to ensure the, <coughs> the ecosystem intact so uh, another one actually is that uh, we we have to look into the our public spaces like parks, uh, waterfront, and so forth, which is very dear to us as a landscape architect, actually. We need to really look into the ideas of the carrying capacities, as well as the ideas of perceived crowding, and how actually we are going to have to in inject this particular idea to ensure that there are not many people actually come to this place at this particular time of the year, or this time of the situation, uh, the pandemic. Because we don't want, uh, we, we, we know that people actually craving for the green spaces and open space, but maybe it's not really good uh, time to do it because of the pandemic. But how can actually we increase the awareness of the perceived crowding as well as the uh, carrying capacity through design, right? Even though we have the way to calculate the carrying capacity, but to, to control it on site, maybe we need some enforcement from the local authority and so forth. There is a challenges that need to be done, uh, need to be overcome. Uh, but in, in another word actually is that, uh, I agree with uh, Tuan Diaisan, in terms of design the, our public space, we need to look into the bigger walkways, we need to look into more amenities uh, to support the, uh, the prevention of COVID-19. And then maybe we need a bigger walkway, bigger spaces and then uh, bigger instant spaces. People want these particular spaces, but as you, as we all know, that it's not easy. We are competing for the land in many aspects uh, of our our life. I can say that. And in terms of the landscape planning uh, per se, we have to look landscape as a place or the or the entity that actually can suppress diseases. Right? I talked once to the veterinary. Doctor, a veterinary doctor, he said that there are many issues actually about the disease that over there, out there in our landscape that has not been tackled. But at the same particular point, moment as well, we have to understand that the landscape spaces can be used actually to suppress the disease. We don't want it to be out of control. All right. So it's very important for the landscape spaces to, to be looked as an TT actually to control the diseases rather than to spread the diseases. But how, going to, how are we going to do it? This is something that everyone of us need to ponder. And of course, the question of accessibility, all right, to the open space, all right, with the movement control, people are looking for these green spaces, many, uh, much more. And then we need to understand that the, the landscape spaces provide good views and it's a good place to be. So for me, uh, for the, for us, the ideas of controlling or helping to curb the pandemic COVID-19 actually either through the design levels as well as the landscape planning level. We have to look into landscape and the natural resources that need to be utilized for a betterment of our society. That's that all. Yeah, okay, thank you, doctor. I think we go to uh, 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 architect Abuzari. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think I leave the best for Prof to, to sum it up. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, okay. Ba basically, I tend to go the other way, uh, Dato. Okay. Yeah. As, as architect, you know, we must understand what are the public places for. for. When we design to restrict, uh, you know, the the the, what do you call it, the restriction of gatherings and so on. 
you know then then we we are actually going against what we are planning the the open spaces for or the urban design for urban design is basically for us is actually the meeting and the gatherings of people where they can share where they can socialize where they can play games where they can push uh, you know their families around and so on and so forth so once we start putting in things inside there, that, that sort of like, hey guys, you know, you must be 10 feet away, two feet away, whatever feet away, fine. You know, for me, it's good enough. Uh, 40 Architects is good enough for the SOP of the day. But what I don't agree totally is, is also uh, where, where parks are closed, where masjids are closed, where, you know, all these things are closed. But the SOP should be enough. The, the public or the, the users must be responsible enough. If they are not responsible for themselves, then they must be responsible for their loved ones, their wife, their kids, their friends, their neighbors, their, you know. You, you don't know who is the carrier here, okay? So I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, the at end of the day, we must do it with reasonable. Uh, you know, reasonable action and responsibility for our, from our own public itself. Design can go somewhere, as pointed out by uh, what do you call it, Sohadi and the rest. You know, but again, you know, there's so much we can do, and we have to think about also. This time around is COVID-19. Next time around, we don't know what it is. Okay, there was SARS. There was a lot of other things that happened. You know. So again, uh, let's not go overboard. That's what I'm saying. That's all I think, Dato. Thank you. Okay, thank you. It's, it's different kind of perception, probably. So, and uh, the last, probably from Professor, you want to say something about it? Uh, one thing about this uh, pandemic, uh, COVID-19, especially the year 2020, where we're supposed to, where we envisage to, uh, to become a developed country, uh, where this vision actually never materialized. But actually, it give, gives us a time to pause, you know, and start to reflect and think back of how we have built our cities and how much the way we design our cities that actually uh, that, that uh, result in us uh, facing this problem. Uh, I see COVID-19 pandemic as a blessing in disguise as far as um, urban design is concerned because it gives us the opportunity to celebrate our public realm. Uh, public realm meaning to say that places and spaces that belongs to the public and where which, uh, which uh, becomes the behavioral setting for the public. And the COVID-19 is here to stay at least for a few more years. Even though with this vaccine, we don't, we don't expect the, the virus to suddenly disappear. So it, in a way, um, it will, uh, uh, allow us to uh, develop a different culture of the way we treat our public spaces. Uh, in, as far as the design concern, our main public spaces are the streets and the squares. Uh, even though we don't have squares in Malaysia, I mean, we, we have, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not the square in the true sense of the word, but we have pocket spaces, we have the Medan, and like the, the Hadi uh, Esan pointed out, Padang being one of the public space, uh, spaces that is uh, very unique uh, to our country. And we are blessed with uh, tropical weather, which allow us to engage our activities outdoor. And this, uh, if you look at COVID-19, you know, the, uh, apart from social distancing, we have to avoid places with very poor ventilation and darkly littered and places that uh, force people to be uh, uh, in a crowded situation. And if you look in the cities, the marketplace is actually one, one, one place that we have to redesign. I mean, we are so used at rubbing shoulders when we go to the marketplace, you know, and then you, I mean, now we have to design back the, the I think the architects have a good opportunity now, opportunity now to design marketplaces which allow social distancing and also to allow outdoor overspill of uh, market activities outside, which actually gives a character to, uh, to our city through this open air. I mean, remember in the olden days where we have this park, Pekan Sari, you know, or, uh, or this, uh, we had the opportunity to give back the, uh, take back the traditions, the tradition of the way we, we engage in the uh, market uh, activities in the past and now in design in, uh, in our post-pandemic uh, cities. Another thing is, is about our streets. All this while we are designing roads, you know, roads just for means of 
uh, cars to pass through. Now we have the opportunity to design streets. We can now turn some parts of the roads into places where people not just uh, converted into sidewalks, but they can engage in uh, uh, spillover activities for the the shops or even the restaurants uh, to occupy. I can I, I see that with this uh, pandemic situation, there'll be the streets will be livelier. Uh, but uh, with this, uh, even though with this uh, social distancing, more people will be occupying the street because now the vendors will now have to uh, operate in such a way that uh, uh, some parts of the streets can be occupied. And yeah, this has been done in many cities. And um, to, to deal with the weather, uh, if you look in uh, Baltimore, what they uh, did is that they require all the shops to have their own like... Um, um, like an awning or something like that to for people to pass through uh, in front of the shops when, when, when it comes to rain and so forth. So these are things that we, we can require to make the cities walkable and accessible because with this post uh, with this pandemic situation, people are discouraged from taking the uh, public transportation. So walking and uh, uh, cycling apart from driving becomes the the the, the favorite uh, the the more preferred uh, means of transportation and with this work from home uh, culture i would foresee that this work uh, this wfh uh, culture will actually continue into the future now that the uh, the, the the company i see now they can actually save more if the people they work uh, their employees are staying at home and then they communicate i mean with the engineers help we can have very good um telecommunication uh, telecommunication system whereby we don't really need to be at the office physically so now we don't really need wider roads or, or wider streets so some of these streets can be given back to the to the public uh, and on the last note i can you have to stop me <laughs> if i try to occupy yeah. the time we One have minute, now minute. to look back at the lost spaces that we have in the cities what i see as lost spaces are the spaces that has been created out of um out of building our transportation networks like the LRT, the the elevated highways, you know, underneath them, they are the, these are the lost spaces. These are spaces that is being created as result for for the transportation needs. But we can actually convert these spaces, you know, to become uh, part of the uh, green networks for people to walk or to to, to cycle. Because I've seen Rain, yeah, playing I've seen, field. Yeah. Uh, I see yeah. in Bordeaux, um, in Bordeaux, France, you know. They converted all the. Uh, they have these railway lines, and uh, they, they they occupied the the spaces being the line for uh, vendors, you know, for shopkeepers, to, uh, florists, you know, all these petty traders, and therefore these spaces become lively instead of just a space for utility, as utility line for the yeah. uh, transportation network. So we have to, uh, we have to have a shift in uh, paradigm shift in the way we view our city. We have to look at. Uh, the lost spaces as the spaces that we have the opportunity to 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 do this do this social distancing and to encourage people to to walk and uh, um, connect uh, places okay good very good i think we finished the first round i think uh, i enjoy everything i enjoy this course from everyone uh, we have uh, half an hour more or less for q and a uh, if i could take one first uh, yeah, we collect from uh, Facebook, yeah, from Patipan Pariyasami. Uh, he asked about urban planning and implementation are diversified into different level of government in Malaysia. Even NFS has drafted new mechanism and instruments for planning and local level, in local level, but state authorities have overruled the initial planning mostly. Silo effect also largely practiced among local authorities in town planning. What is your comment on this matter? Anyone of you to pick up the questions, please? I <laughs> Sorry? I, I can comment on that, on that title part. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> okay, start the professor. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I think I think Tuhaji Isan is actually more more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the yeah, more yeah. appropriate person yeah. to respond to this aspect of planning. Mm. But I can mm. I can comment mm. on this uh, silo working in silo culture. I think this is this has to stop. This 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 culture of working in silo is actually the major stumbling block. As far as uh, implementation of good urban design is concerned, mm -hmm. I, I I would agree just now with what. Uh, to Haji Isan saying, we are not short of guidelines, but sometimes guidelines, good guidelines does not mean good implementation. We need people to actually um, enforce that the guidelines are being uh, complied. 
end. Yeah. And in order to to do so, the local authority has to work as a team. All the departments in the local authority has to work in a team because we cannot have just the planners, you know, to to uh to do the coordination without the help of the architects who are actually responsible in the with the on the building or the landscape architect uh, department. But I can see the I mean my experience of doing the uh heritage trail master plan for the BKL. I see I see this uh working in silo culture quite quite glaring and to a certain extent that sometimes you know i have to tell each of them each of the department you know, we have to work together because otherwise the, this month you cannot enforce you're going to implement this master plan because like i said i think that's why we use this title a shared responsibility by all it's a question mark but actually it's not a question mark it's a fact you cannot have implement good urban design uh, just leaving to one one particular uh, profession to to implement that. So I don't know how to do it. I've been um, uh, working in culture. Uh, this working uh, working in silo culture can only uh, be stopped with a good leadership. We need a very strong uh, mayor or a very strong <laughs> head of the local mm -hmm. authority to force all the all the departments to work together and also to actually interact with the public and with the uh, other professionals involved in building city. Like I think the architect Buzarim uh, uh, comment just now about, you know, there should be a lot of dialogues and series of discussions. I mean, this, this is actually being practiced in uh, in the developed countries very much, you know, when, uh, and, and that's why we can see very well coordinated uh, design. But I think sadly to say in Malaysia, I think this culture, another thing with our culture is that they don't like people who criticize or to give comments that, that they don't like to hear. This is our problem in Malaysia. When you comment something, I have this problem when people say, you know, I'm very negative. It's not that I'm very negative because I give my opinion. I want my opinion to be about, I don't, it doesn't mean that you have to listen. But this, this culture of actually uh, allowing people to express their opinion and also to take other people's opinion into consideration, not, not as something very negative, uh, um, you know, has, has to stop. So once we are open to criticism, then we can improve. If you if you are very negative or you are you if you if you are, do not like people to comment on your work on your design then forever I think you will yeah, be very yeah, yeah. Uh, it may mediocre. I would I would uh, I hope 144 100 plus uh, city leader is listening to us today hopefully. Haji <laughs> Esa <laughs> uh, probably uh, yeah Haji Esa you first. I think if I take it from the question that, that was asked, uh, mm -hmm. it's again, uh, I, I'm using a word that is uh, maybe not uh, very acceptable to most when, when I said there's an ignorance on the planning system in, in the country, you know, uh, a, a total of understanding of the, the function of the local government uh, uh, planning to the state government, to the federal government. We have a DASA per Bandaran Negara. Which actually yes, I'm I'm with you totally, Dato. Tanu Haji, ninety nine point nine percent agree. Ignorance, yes, please. <laughs> which which kind of dictates mm. uh, what needs to be done? All the things that we yeah. discussed today mm. uh, in terms of public participation, and 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 uh, when Prof was saying about uh, uh, people not being able to accept uh, criticism. Uh, not being able to look at uh, other point of view. But I, I don't know, maybe that can be summarized. Again, like mm -hmm. I say, maybe I'm going to say another controversial thing. Maybe it's about time that we have the, the local government, we have an election. Uh, and then they will be more responsible. Uh, I, I think if we look at the recently, the more successful uh, local authorities are led by uh, professionals who understand uh, urban design, who understand urban planning. So it, it helps that that um, uh, uh, if the leadership at, at that local government look at things at the micro scale, because the micro scale affects, uh, but the, the micro scale is supposed to um, interpret uh, the, at the state and the local government uh, planning and urban design policy. It's there, it's there. Uh, when we do the structure plan, we have an urban design component. When we do the local plan, we have the urban design component. But as spoken truly by some of the panels, it's not taken seriously. It's just an, another sector rather than the overwhelming uh, feeling or, or uh, as required by law that urban design should be 
how planning is looked at and all the bylaws and all the regulations that we have, for example, the distance between uh, the buildings, uh, the, the, the measurement of the sidewalks, we, we can we are not quick to change, like how to use the space under the elevated walkways, how to use the space under uh, elevated uh, public transport system. Kita lambat, kita nak, nak adjust kegunaan tu kena minta permission, you know, all the good ideas are there. By the time we decide to do something about it, you know, the drug addicts are already under there. So um, we have to be quicker in adapting and we have, we also have to understand how to work within the rules. The rules are there. We have been independent for 60 plus years. Uh, we have done planning for 100 years, my God. You know, okay. you, you have to have another 100 years before we understand how to use and work within the rules and how for the third tier government to realize that they are the government that can implement this micro system at that level thank you okay can can we pick up or anyone interested in answering that question or can we go further can, can i just add to this a little short bit one. short one yeah, yeah short okay. one yeah i did touch about working in silo but uh, the, the thing that I want to point out where the uh, about missed opportunity, you know, we have a very grand and so-called well-planned, uh, well-planned city, yeah, in, in Putrajaya. I, I'm, I'm going to say Putrajaya, okay? All that we talked about, it, you know, all the things that we have said and, and discussed and all the things that we want, in terms of character in Putrajaya is just not there. We have very wide roads which are not pedestrian friendly from one building to another building, from one park to another park. We don't have all this, you know. So I, I like to just point out, you know, where did we go wrong there? You know, here we had a very good zero base and yet we are repeating. To me, lah, this is my personal view. Don't take it as if it's a times view. All right. This is, I think, the, the very fact that we have said all these things are not there, you know. So again, we need to, for all future cities or even current cities at the moment, we need to go back and work together, you know, work together, regular meetings, regular interaction, so that even the small, small spaces that we, you don't have to do the whole city in the beginning. Just take one portion first, make that happen work yeah. together with all the authorities and even the even the, the the commercial people the shop owners the you know all get them all in what do they want okay instead okay. our roads are getting bigger getting one more story oh, i mean coming one way yeah, yeah. Mm. so okay yeah that, yeah that I, I yeah i agree with you yeah i agree with you i think we start the small thing first probably you know yeah. so when we think it's too big i think we lost uh, we lost mm -hmm. in, in 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 the middle so I think, can we take another question, please? Yeah. So uh, from Jamal Ahmad, uh, we normally look for scapegoat when our design go wrong or not to our expectation. We impose our value on the design without in-depth empathy planning. Anyone want to take up the matter? Is that true? Look for scapegoat. Now, I think I can I can just yeah. mention a little bit here. Mm. Okay, that it's not actually looking for scapegoat. It's basically not wanting to take responsibility for what has happened. Mm. You know, normally we say okay, it's down to the local authority, down to who, down to that, down to the planners, down to the architects, down to. But if we come together, that's where the working in silo should be. Uh, should be slowly or immediately eradicated. eradicated, you know, so that at the end of the day, when we work together, the failure is ours together, not one person, not one authority, not one team, you know, so there, from there, then we, we, we come, you know, when you take, when you take the public, the note, uh, what do you call it, when you take views from the public, you know, if it fails, then we cannot you cannot blame the authority because these views are coming from the public or from the professional or from the you know so no one person is take is taken as one so i tend to agree it's not so much of blaming people but not 
taking responsibility. I take it the other way. Yeah. Okay, good. So the rest probably want to. I don't. Yeah. I don't quite catch what the question is actually um, emphasizing. But I think uh, uh, when talk about design and then then uh, what happens when design fail. I think um, I would agree that. Did, I think I did mention uh, about this just now about designing, you know, based on templates of other countries, and then uh, you know, and then uh, plonking it into Malaysia and hope that it would do wonders like it has done in other countries, you know. And that that kind of culture will have to stop. We we have to be we even as designers we have to have a sense of pride to our own traditions, our own. Um, uh, our own culture, the way we be. I mean, look at our traditional uh, houses. They are beautiful, aren't they? And even the colonial architecture, they are responsive to the climate. But where we do we go wrong after that? You know, how come our, our design are not even responding to our tra traditions, not responding to our culture, not responding to our climate? The climate is actually here to stay. We cannot change the climate. We are stuck with this climate. But how come we do not design? So that you know we are in um, uh, responsive to this climate. So that uh, if you look, you know, sometimes um, we build building, you know, just for the sake of having a, an air conditioning, even though you don't really need one. Uh, but the template is there, you know, the plan is already in the computer, and you just generate the plans, and then you just put it wherever it is. So this, I think, uh, there should be this change of caution whereby design has to be site specific has to be culture specific, has to be, um, it cannot take place anywhere else other than the site. And the local authority must help this to happen by actually monitoring, guiding and controlling development so that, you know, each design that comes out on the, uh, on the site in the, in the city will be actually in harmony with each other. I think in UK, they have this term um, uh, where you call keeping in keeping. Uh, which yeah. means that you have to design with the context in mind. And I prof, think when, Prof, sorry? can I stop you for a while? Because I want okay. you to be last. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, sorry. Last, yeah? <laughs> so I, I want you lost your idea. So I think I, uh, might I, I want this because, afterwards. Yeah, yeah, because we have hardly uh, 15 minutes. Okay, I think okay, okay. We, if we can take another two or one or two questions, mm. probably after that you can include because I give the show to you later. Yeah, <laughs> because, okay. Uh, another question is actually regarding the pandemic, we all agree about the needs of people for space to walk, cycle, exercise while uh, social distancing. And we saw many cities in the global north manage to do this. What stopped our city from doing this? Why were our local authorities not agile enough to do that? Is there anything in the plans to make them more robust in this sense? Yeah, very factual. Probably anyone of you can pick up this way. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll, I think it's again, the, it's planning related in that sense. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think we are not adaptable. I, I think if I can put that word uh, as, as a city, uh, we, we have not adapted well. We don't adapt to, to what's happening uh, outside there fast enough in, in some aspects. But on the other hand, we also have done pretty well. Maybe um, uh, if, if you look at what we have been doing I think in, in, in Malaysia, uh, this is maybe just one example. I'm not going to touch on the micro part about the cycling and the walking. I think that has been going on for years. As, as Darim was saying that you know, what, what is staying home and what is, uh, if, if we can, you know, human needs public space. But on the other hand, we managed to change our agriculture exhibition center into a hospital while China was claiming they can do a new hospital in 10 days, we did ours in three days. So that is something that I think we, we should be proud of because uh, meaning that although it was not directly planned per se, but we do have enough resilient spaces in the cities to adapt to uh, disaster and, and, and challenges. So I, I think uh, that's important. But I would like also to relate, uh, Dr. Musi, if yeah. I may, on, on Jamil's question was that, um, wh where do we go from here? We, we also, uh, the, the basic point I think the question was asking is, it's 
not to look at only other people's fault. If we, are, I mean, they tend to be, we tend to be critical of of um, of local authority, but I think we have to be critical of ourselves when we submit the plans, uh, when we defend our plans. Do we have the guts to say what is wrong? You know, to actually say that look, this building or this area uh, cannot uh, be of this nature. You know, because we are advising, we are the designers, we are the planners. If we ourselves come up with buildings that are not energy efficient, uh, that we quarrel about uh, five foot space uh, planters box, you know, if we quarrel about um, uh, giving adequate uh, open spaces, so nak salah orang apa? Kita bagi design level atas sikit pada lumkang. So you know, that's a, a nasty way of putting it. But if we if we don't, you know, we stop. We we have to look. That way, we have to look at it comprehensively. Yes, the authorities and the decision makers would have to bear some of the responsibilities. But if we submit design, you know, on a scale of 10, we submit level one, too bad, you know, don't blame others. Look at ourselves. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, I just want to respond to, I think, maybe not respond, I think, a bit more on the two ideas and uh, ideas. I think about we looking. Back to our self, uh, I think what we lack as a professional nowadays probably is the self criticism. I think, uh, besides <coughs> what Proswana said, that uh, we tend uh, we are not allow ourselves or we are afraid to be criticized, but we did we need criticism actually. A self criticism to make ourselves better be because without, without knowing what actually we're doing wrong, we cannot move forward. That is one thing, and it seems goes to the to the cities itself, the city management, the uh, the leadership, and so forth. We need to be sensitive actually to the to the to the needs of people actually, and to the need of the city itself. But uh, do the city management and the people who are inside the city administration actually doing that? Are they sensitive enough to come up with the new ideas to solve people needs and people problem? So they cannot be. Uh, in status quo, they need to be proactive. They don't need to wait mm. for the uh, professional to come up with a proposal. They also they need to come up with their own proposal. That is what I say. And it go back, I think, what to what Prof. Hannah said. The leadership of the city need to be uh, to be enhanced. And then uh, the ideas of the third government's actions. Uh, that's another way, maybe. To enhance the responsibilities of the leaders at the city levels, uh, maybe that is what uh, I think uh, can further accelerate uh, the improvement of our city condition. Okay, Dr. okay, okay. Just for the panelists, I think we start late, isn't it? By Five ten minutes. minutes. Yeah. Five. Can can yeah? Can we go a little bit uh, longer? Probably uh, we finish at uh, ten past twelve, probably or less a bit. Of course, there is a few more questions that need to be answered. Yeah, uh, what from Ni, Ni Aiman Razik? How can a design meet the mobility requirement of a city dweller? And can a design in Malaysia nudge? Is it nudge? And UDGE as to adopt active transit versus current car centric model. Anyone who like to yes, uh, probably. Can I... Take this one. Yeah, yeah, good. It's good from technology. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm not uh, looking at, at the design part. I just want to relate to the current pandemic that we are we are experiencing. Oh, okay, okay. One right. At least one good thing about what happened. Uh, what what you get from this current pandemic is that um, people are working from home. Most of them. I mean, it can be majority from them are working from home. Uh, companies are forced to to let their 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 staff to work from home. Uh, I mean, uh, those uh, who are uh, Operational, they, they still have to come, but still they they they, they don't come every day. Maybe uh, alternate day, but those who um, can work from home, they they are they are they are they are allowed to work from home, whether it's because of following the government instruction or um, of course saving. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you look at the universities, they are also forced to do that as well. The students are learning from home uh, online. Uh, it, it not not be from home, but from somewhere else, but through online uh, medium. So. Um, and also, we also experience this because you know uh, this. Uh, for example, we we are using Zoom from our for our mm -hmm. uh, forum today. Um, maybe a year before, yeah, 
not may, maybe not majority of us are, are very familiar of using this kind of uh, media hmm. to conduct meetings, to conduct works. Eh? Um, uh, well, although that the this kind of technology has been around for many years, uh, hmm. those who works uh, in N uh, MNC, eh, multinational companies, they are used to it because they they used to to have meetings uh, uh, at odd times because of the different time zone between countries. But but for for those who are working. Uh, of course, in, in our country local, we, we don't really communicate with uh, uh, <coughs> countries where the time difference is uh, huge. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So we, we don't really, but then, although that the technology is there, we, we don't really want to use it until until the pandemic. Then everybody are forced to use that. So uh, to relate to the, the the congestion on the road or the uh, the, uh, the question I mentioned about uh, the, the the city is uh, designed uh, about car, car, current car centric mode of design. Yeah. So I believe this will, um, in a way, tackle this this issue uh, in in the future, and and I hope that uh, this this current practice uh, being uh, embraced and adopted by by most of the companies or universities or all organizations, so that we can reduce the the, the traffic uh, on the road, uh, especially. Uh, I mean, in KL, it's not really during the peak time. All over, I mean, all. Uh, all, uh, during all all day, you can see that their traffic is, is heavy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's thanks from me. And I chip in a little bit. Okay. 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 I've 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 been yeah. You know, uh, this is not maybe not bad, but the European countries are doing this. This while we here in Malaysia, uh, we talk about roads. The roads are getting wider, bigger. More, more cars, more vehicles coming into the city centers, but the, it is the opposite in in in, in most major cities in uh, you know in, in Europe and US. You know, how come that we don't use that? You know, we are always looking at at uh, at overseas, but we are taking the bad example. Yeah. You know? I agree, yes, I agree. Yes. Mm. Yeah, you know, I remember when I used to stay, let's say, when I was a student, you know, in the beginning, the roads were wide, you know, in the residential mm. area and also in, in the cities. But when I arrived, when I, after I graduated and then came back to visit again, I found just the opposite, you know, where the roads are giving ways to the pedestrian, you know, the roads where it is pedestrian, you know, uh, the roads, they, they have to, they have to slow down because it's so narrow, you know, it's narrow, it's, it is meant to be narrow, you know, it's, it's meant not to be, to be what you call it, wide and, and so on. And even you take, uh, in terms of technology, you look at not far, pergi ke Singapore, you know, where they restrict the number of uh, vehicle that can come into the city, yeah. hmm. you know. Yeah, they, yeah. If that can be used at certain time of the days, maybe during the peak hours, all right, you allow more people to come in, more vehicle because they want to go down to work. But during the, the rest of the day, you know, make sure that they don't come in, you know, yeah. things like that. I think there were plans before considered, but then again, because of political punya, uh, you know, the higher up and, you know, and so on, the pressure from the I don't know, probably from the commercial side and so on, you know, that they, they fail to, to implement this. So these are the things that we need to go back in terms of traffic and urban movement and so on and so forth. Thank you, Dato. Okay. Uh, we need one more question, probably. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, probably last one before I can give everything, or not everything, can get the last say to Prof, yeah? So one very lengthy one, yeah? Uh, urban planners or architect would usually advocate for decreasing congestion through wanting to slow down streets and decrease amount of cars coming into urban areas while engineers are motivated by technical <laughs> statistics yeah and what average daily traffic operational speeds or of uh, street and so on to widen street with the intent of decreasing congestion what step can be taken to make both professions understand each other to build better cities for everyone 
Yes, probably this one uh, planners or architect versus engineers. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, can I can I take the first? Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, please, Haji. Yeah. So with regards to, uh, uh, I think it was mentioned among the panelists. I think we have to understand the difference between roads, streets. You know, those are essential things. So as, as, experience, yeah. As, experience, as uh, um, AR was saying just now, um, that the term is reclaiming back our streets. That that's that's what it is. When cities first evolved, it was not designed for the cars. But yeah. nowadays, the cities are designed more, more often than not for cars, parking for cars, lay-by for cars, you know. So the, the solutions have been engineering, congestion charges, uh, uh, more parking spaces, wider streets. Those are against uh, what we advocate in good urban design, in good planning. What we advocate is for the people to walk. What we advocate is because there was an example in Brisbane, uh, uh, there was a lot of protest when they wanted to close the street. So they actually did a survey when they when they closed the street, when they closed that particular street, and actually we advocated for Jalan Tekuk Draman to be closed. When we first closed the street, uh, the the um, the traders, you know, they say, oh, mana nak, macam mana nak biaga kan? Kereta tak ada. But when they found out, they actually, the, the, their business tripled. When they close the street, their business triple. Why? Because it's not the car that shops, it's people. So this is something that, that we, we have to make clear. So I say it's awareness. You know, shops, eateries, uh, they, they, they want people. So how do we solve this? We allow for cars to come into the cities, but not in the city center. We allow them to, car and to come into the city by the slower speed. And definitely as a national policy, which is good for the environment, we should reduce private cars. That's in the national policy. And at the same time, we contradict that by producing our own cars. And we intend to produce flying cars. You know, so uh, <laughs> we are sometimes uh, contradictory, contradicting ourselves. So we have to change that mindset that cars equate and congestion equate uh, development. We can have high density, we can have high number of people, we can have good business without having the same number of cards. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Engineers, probably. <laughs> Doctor, <laughs> Doctor Azhar, you want to say something? <laughs> oh, kita bagi akitek dulu. When the question was, uh, I mean, like try trying to 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 get engineers and the architect to <laughs> uh, to argue, but uh, basically, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not being naughty to versus you all. <laughs> I just uh, met you all. <laughs> Speak up, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's required coordination, right? I mean, yep, yep. Uh, when 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 there's problems uh, arise, we comes to to rectify. So to rectify, yeah, you you. Um, I mean, of course, the, the, the technical people, the engineers, they are looking at the statistics to solve the problems. Uh, 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 it, it is different from when you are um, designing from from zero, right? So when you design from zero, of course, coordination is easy. But when 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 you want to rectify problems. Um, uh, who are given the most um, role in, in rectifying yes. the problem? So yeah, it, I it, would say you many things is uh, try and error, isn't it? Yes, yes. Try and error, so, yeah. Okay. So, uh, I think, but but at the end of the day, it's not that we, we are we are not uh, coordinating well, but we try our best to to do that. Okay, can I just add? I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I think ultimately it came came down to what I said earlier. My early statement at the end of the day. What does the authority wants for the city? What kind of city? What kind of identity are you looking for? Are you looking for a pedestrian city? Are you looking to give back to this to, to the to the public? You know, all these effects ultimately when they start engaging with the community. When I say engaging, it's not only the public, the commercial, and so on and so forth. Once you have actually decided to do this. You know, then then only you can come up with a very uh, comprehensive or plan to 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 achieve that kind of uh, that kind of aim. Okay, Ver, uh, vehicle versus uh, vehicle versus uh, pedestrian. Ah, okay. This has been going on for years and years and years. <coughs> you know, but the good thing is that when I I mentioned cities in Europe, 
they have decided that they want to give back to the pedestrian. And as pointed out by uh, uh, Haji San tadi, you know, the the misconception of traders, kalau ada banyak kereta, lagi banyak dia punya customer. No, it's not. So again, tu pulang lah. You know, it's up to the, the 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 authorities and the community what they want. And pointed out again, if the community wants the pedestrian, make noise, yeah, yeah. Yes. and so on and so forth. But unfortunately, our our community at the moment is not that passive, <laughs> that, very passive, very <laughs> passive. All right. So I think you know, at the end of the day, we must ask ourselves. The authorities must ask ourselves because ultimately. You know, ultimately, it's the authorities who decide what to be implemented. We can shout, we can claim, we can scream, we can do anything. Kalau the authorities do not wish to do this, to do these things, yes, they, it won't happen. Okay, Tom. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, probably uh, before I can go to the last person, probably I just keep very probably short to Dr. Suhardi. Lastly, from you, probably. Mute. Mute. Unmute. You mute, eh? Ah, yes, yes. Okay. Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, thank you, Dato. Um, I think uh, back to this, uh, the last questions about the differences of uh, why engineer, engineer doing like that, <laughs> architect doing like that, and architect doing like that. I think, first of all, I think I go back to the basics. Uh, um, it's, uh, it's very obvious, actually, the engineers and the architects or designers have different philosophy on how to do things. But I think need to be, uh, this thing needs to be managed. This thing needs to be managed. And at the end of the day, I think, as pointed by architect Abu Zarim, the authority have the final say actually what what actually the city needs to be, all right? So once we have the clear and very visionary plan and how actually the city should look like, stick with it. Don't try to deviate with that particular vision and plan and uh, if there is any changes need to be done after a few years, then do it uh, professionally and maybe revisit back the plan, the ideas and so forth. But once it's been decided by the cities, we all need, need, need to work together to make sure that the plan works. All right? Of course, there will be glitch here and there, but it should be overcome professionally. And of course, uh, uh, it's common after the plan has been approved and start to be implemented. We will hear a lot of criticism, but I think that's part and parcel of the mentioned society and the uh, living democracy. So I think that's uh, my comment, uh, Dato. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, all the panelists. I think uh, we have so much uh, knowledge today. I think knowledge is very important to everyone. And uh, sharing, I think, is also another, the most important, yeah? So I think uh, time is running short now. Uh, I'm not going to go through because I have more than 10 uh, points to be read it out. I think it's very long, consuming my time. So I think uh, I'm going to the last uh, part, what last big points to professor because she's the, actually the president of uh, Malaysian Urban Design uh, Association. And also I think somebody is very passionate about urban design. I think, please Prof, can you just uh, conclude everything from what we have discussed today. Thank you. I think that should be the role of the moderator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind. I think so yeah. we don't have much uh, much time. Yeah. Before, before, yeah, before we go, I would like to thank uh, uh, all our uh, panelists here for supporting the event. I mean, Breaker Banda has just, uh, was actually um, uh, registered with RS uh, just prior to the MCO. So we we practically a society that operates under the new norm, and and it, it's um and it's good that actually uh, our presence here you know will not try to um sort of um challenge whatever society is around, but our role here is to support for the betterment of the cities because the our intention is actually to champion for better quality cities with a uh, uh, with good design that uh, that actually foster our identity. Uh, going back to our discussion about the shared response, uh, because here, if you look at the webinar, the uh, the concern here is about the implementation of uh, good urban design. Why we focus on implementation? Because we are we are we don't have much problem in uh, coming up with proposals, policies, uh, plans, 
or even guidelines for urban design. But we have lots of problem when it comes to implementation because implementation is not something that can just happen uh, just like that. It needs a lot of effort. It needs a lot of uh, commitment for all the professionals involved to actually embrace what are the policies uh, that is being uh, drafted for, for the city, what are the visions that they have in the future, and to actually come up with the operational, to operationalize all these uh, policies into something that is tangible and workable on the ground. I think the, 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 the problem is actually this, this getting things to be done on the ground is something that we, uh, uh, sometimes you look, the design is okay on the drawings. But when it comes when it happens on the ground, you know, with a very poor monitoring or uh, coordination or enforcement, and you can you can see it as a total failure. I would I would like to um, reflect on the uh, situation that's happened in UK uh, uh, in the seventies. Uh, I think in the in the nineties uh, when uh, they have a very strong political will to get good design of cities because you see UK. Uh, it has a good tradition of their traditional cities, you know, which they can uh, manage to conserve and uh, uh, and preserve. But in the 50s and 60s, with the comprehensive um, development uh, uh, and the building of cities are prior uh, after the war, you know, there's lots of developments that actually damaging the character of the cities. And most of the cities in UK tends to look alike. They they sort to have something like a, like a template, whereby all the city centres uh, uh, looks the same until uh, Prince Charles come out with uh, a book called A Vision for Britain, where he really condemned, you know, he really condemned what has happened to the cities and he, he, he was actually uh, pointing fingers to the local authorities, to the architects, you know, to back up and to come up with good design so that Britain will remain, uh, the, the cities in Britain will remain uh, having a response, uh, um, back to their traditions of building uh, cities uh, that have character and for the people. And the architects, the professionals took it, took it as a challenge because Prince Charles being a prince, uh, the prince of Wales, you know, is a public figure and somebody that uh, they respect, you know, the royal family. And I, when I was uh, doing some research in, um, uh, over there at that time, I was, uh, I was discussing with the architects and the, the, the local authority planners, they see it as a challenge, you know, because they're some, now, you know, the, the public figure is actually now pointing fingers to them, you know, to back up. And, and that's when they, they, they start to, to improve a lot in terms of uh, designing better cities. And you look now, you know, most of the cities in uh, UK, or the small, they are pedestrian friendly environment. You cannot actually bring your cars into the city center now. I was uh, I was really um, uh, surprised because most of the cities that I knew now, you know, it's, it cannot, you can have to park uh, in well allocated uh, um, uh, parking spaces surrounding the city center and you just walk. And the environment is very walkable, very conducive. You tend to enjoy walking there. I think Malaysia needs a strong political will. I think we are our professionals are talking the same language. If, I, if I'm not, I mean, we, we all have a common uh, objective. I don't think any of our professions wanted something bad uh, for the city. We all, uh, we all wanted something good, but we cannot do it alone. And I think in Malaysia, we need, we need our politicians to come on board with us. We need a strong political will for them to actually encourage us to come up with a good design because the politicians are very powerful because like some of the discussions, you know, sometimes what we wanted, the proposals that we wanted to do plans cannot be done because there is some uh, hidden agenda, you know, there is some wahyu, what you call it, wahyu, you know, the directives that we don't really actually cannot reveal. And the end, in the end, you know, you don't, you don't see things uh, happen uh, as what it should be planned. So we need, we need the politicians or some public figures to come forward to champion for good urban design to get all of us, you know, to have a common vision to build uh, uh, better cities uh, for, uh, in the future. Cities that is not just very um, efficient, cities that are not just, you know, with uh, uh, modern cities, that cities with identities, cities which value our heritage and our traditions and cities that meets the needs of our, the public. I think I stop at that. Okay, it's nice. That's almost concluding remarks from uh, Professor, I guess. Uh, okay, I think finish all uh, what we need to do. We finish our four questions, all responded by uh, panelists, and also we have the Q&A from the public as well. 
and uh, I think this one was at uh, all. Oh, this one is the best. I would say the best enriching day uh, over the weekend about a body design. And a body design is actually cannot stop here. You have to pursue with many knowledge because uh, very crucial. And the most important thing actually, how can we actually disseminate our knowledge to the public at large and also the local authority, uh, warga, 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 dan sebagainya. Because uh, uh, from my very short experience in DBKL, I think many things they are doing in silo. That's the word silo, yeah. And uh, I, if I could, probably for a start, I want to probably there was really still very initial idea. We want to create a group of a profession uh, to look after the uh, what do you call it one the planning applications. This is very important. Uh, even though I think look very difficult, probably we have to we have to start from the small first. We have uh, probably after this, I promise with Banaraya, probably we can have very small discussion first. We get together among us, among profession, engineers, uh, planners, architect, urban design, whoever, let's keep architect and so on, sitting together. And probably it's the best thing to do is to create some guideline, guideline per se, in order for us to achieve achieving uh, the good city, uh, especially in Kuala Lumpur, because I always consider Kuala Lumpur is the city where everyone coming. Uh, if I can, uh, from my reading, uh, if I can actually reflect uh, back in 1987, you know, 1857, when KL start uh, existed, uh, this one, uh, what is Playa in Bahasa Inggris? Playa is uh, uh, like a, a tourist, yeah, came from Britain, and he mentioning that. Kuala Lumpur is the most beautiful small town in Far East. I think we have to dig, we have to search back our own identity uh, where actually Kuala Lumpur is. They, they say it's not one of the best, but it's the best, it's the most beautiful city in the Far East in 1857. I think uh, 1857. 1857. Yeah, 1857 when actually KL started. Yeah, uh, even though many people about 1890 and so on, but I have read uh, from the books is 1857 or 1875. Either one. Yeah. So uh, see uh, how actually the outsider look at Kuala Lumpur at that time, right. and now I think we we should start from there. And we start. We, we we probably we get together again. Uh, this one is not uh, one stop for us. Yeah. We can stop. Cannot stop here. We can proceed with various series, urban talk. Probably four, five, six, seven after this, and we start uh, talking more detail about urban design, urban design guideline, urban design brief, and so on. I think with that, I think we are now uh, is uh, twelve, almost twelve twenty. Uh, I thanks to everyone here. I thanks to uh, President uh, Malaysian Urban Design Association and also all the president, uh, MIP, we have all uh, PAM, we have uh, ILAM, yeah, and also IEM. It's nice to be here. Thank you so much. I think uh, we appreciate your effort and time to be with us today. Yeah, thank you, thank you. and uh, yeah. hopefully we can meet up again in the future with different topics, uh, themes, and so on. With that, I end thank our, thank our discourse. With, thank you so much. Have a good holiday, and kata uh, kita jaga kita stay safe. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih banyak. Assalamualaikum. Terima kasih banyak. 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 Thank you. Thank you.